welcome to How Do I Identify If He's Right For You. I'm Matthew Coast, and with me today is Joe Amoya from gpsforlove.com. And Joe is uh, Joe's an expert in helping women identify emotionally unavailable men, how to find men who are ready for a relationship, and how to create a healthy relationship with them once you've found those, those types of men that you're looking for. Uh, so thanks for being with me today, Joe. Thank you for having me, Matt. It's an honor and privilege to be here with you. Awesome. So uh, just to get started, uh, can you tell us a little bit about why you started helping women? What, uh, what, what got you started in this? Okay. So because we're limited on time, I'll, I'll give you the cliff note version. Um, basically, I, my occupation was a chiropractor. I went to school and I practiced chiropractic for about 20 years and struggled in my love life and ultimately got engaged to a woman who was completely wrong for me was literally 28 days away from getting married and we both realized we were making a huge mistake. We pulled the plug and I did a lot of work on myself and I said, you know, what happened? I thought I was a smart, intelligent guy, yet I was in a relationship where I was absolutely miserable and yet I was still willing to marry that person. So as a result of doing that inner work and getting to the truth, I realized that <clears throat> there was a huge hole in my life. There was a huge void. My dad died when I was 15 years old, had a great relationship with my dad. And ultimately what I was trying to do is create a family of my own and quite honestly she was the meal ticket. So I realized that, you know what, that relationship sucked. <laughs> I never wanted another unhappy and unfulfilling relationship. I didn't care if I had to be single, never had a son of my own. I never wanted to be in another crappy relationship. So then I started asking myself some questions. Well, what is it that I need? Because in that relationship I did everything to make her happy and make the relationship work and I was miserable. So as a result of that I created something that I called a checklist for love and got clear on what were those important qualities and characteristics that I needed from a potential mate. Once I defined those, then I simply started dating and, and really would literally screen people to, to say, are you this person? Do you have what I need? You know, didn't go for the chemistry that I used to go for and you know, the hot factor that a lot of us guys do. I started focusing on the outside, but also the, the inside, those intrinsic qualities. And as a result, I met my wife and from the get-go, from day one, it was just this easy, natural relationship. We've now been together 16 years, married 14, have not only one but three sons, and it's that relationship that we all want, and ultimately in my journey I realized that this was my purpose in life is to help others create this, because at the end of the day, we're all wired to love and to be loved, and so what do we need to create that relationship we really want and, and that we deserve in life? So that's kind of the clip note version. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's amazing, and, and uh, it's great that you figured out when you did um, – you know that that the relationship that you're in just wasn't going to work for you because I, I know um, you know I, I know for myself a lot of the women in in our community will contact me after being in a relationship for three five seven years with someone who just isn't isn't looking for the same things that she's looking for who just isn't compatible really and and um, and having a healthy relationship um, and uh, she's constantly attempting to turn this guy who uh, she's with into Mr. Right and and it's real interesting because I see a lot of information like that out on the internet where um, the advice is to just turn the guy that you're with into the right guy you know don't don't go out and screen anybody make sure you know make him into fit the mold of who you want to be um, so, uh, so why do you think it's so important to to screen out men? What uh, what what would this uh, help women do? <laughs> well, you know, man, really, I'm a simpleton. I like to break things down into its simplest, easiest components. And to me, it really comes down to: Do you want to be happy? You know, do you want a relationship that is easy, that you don't have to turn somebody to make him into who you you want him to be, but who is naturally that person that you're looking for from the get go? And so I believe that there's one person on this earth, at least one person, that can naturally give you what it is you're looking for. And you know, you and I have spoken before, and that it really is this fear that I'm never going to find what I really want, so I'm going to have to take this guy, this square peg, and make him fit in the round hole. Where, and that's why you know, the majority of people struggle in their relationships, because they don't believe there's that one guy out there, or you know, they want the guy that's really hot, that makes them feel special in the bedroom, but who makes them <laughs> makes them miserable outside. So it's really about getting clear and focusing on finding that one guy. And I believe, and I've learned, is that when you operate from that place and you're not afraid, 
and you're willing to give up the good to go for the great, that the universe kind of takes care of the detail, and that guy will show up however he's meant to show up in your life. Yeah, so one of the big concerns that I get from a lot of women is that is that they really don't think that there's there's a great guy out there for them and, and that every man that they meet is a commitment phobe or or that uh, every you know when he when he says something to her like he he wants to be with her and gets really excited and and you know talks about marriage and then all of a sudden he disappears on her. Um it, are men really all commitment phobes? Well, first of all, what I, we need to do is we need to differentiate because I believe that there's a difference between men and boys. So the way I explain that is boys are the ones, like I have three boys, you know, they're 11, 9, and 7. And, you know, they want what they want what they want when they want it. That's kind of what boys do. And ultimately there's a maturation process and it's my job as their father to teach them that's not how it works, that your choices and decisions ultimately affect other people. So there are some guys who never get the message and they live the rest of their life that way. You know, it's all about what they want on their terms. And a lot of these guys, quite simply, you know you're a guy, are just looking to get laid. And so those are the kind of guys, they could be amazing. The chemistry can be awesome. They can be great lovers, not the best relationship partners. So you got to realize, if you want to have some fun, go ahead and knock yourself out. But if you think you're going to turn one of those guys into a relationship material, you're wasting your time. And I know a lot of people listen to this and, yeah, I've been there, done that. So you got to start off with that and then differentiate that they're also men. Who got, those are the guys who are emotionally available, who are responsible, who are unselfish, who know how to be good relationship partners and who are willing to do so. So you've got to be able to quite quickly be able to differentiate. Look, and at this stage of the game, every woman should know that a guy is going to, some guys, the boys, are going to tell you what you want to hear. And they might even think that they're relationship material, but ultimately their actions are going to show you that they're not. So the beauty of life in screening, you just have to sit back and allow them to show you. One of the biggest mistakes women make is they jump into relationships and they get involved with these guys who say and do all the right things in the beginning and then as you say they disappear and the women are like you know what the hell he said all the right things in the beginning yes just because he said it doesn't mean he's gonna live up to it. So how does how does a woman know that a guy is looking for a relationship? And what, what's, what is it that tells her that, that this guy might actually be worth pursuing or, or uh, allowing him to pursue her? Right. The biggest thing, and again, to make it real simple, is a guy shows you that having a relationship is a priority to him. So when I met my wife, I didn't play games. I incorporated her in all aspects of my life. You know, if, if I went out with friends, you know, I invited her to go out to friends. If I had a family function, I invited her to a family function. If I wanted to be with her, I called her, and I showed up, and I took her out again and again. I didn't call her every three months. I didn't call her only when it was convenient for me and I had an opening in my schedule. I moved my schedule around because I wanted to be with her because being with her was important to me. So when a guy is looking for a relationship, and here's the, here's the key phrase, he's going to consistently show you by his actions, not just his words, but by his actions, that being in a relationship is a priority and is important to him. Okay, so is there uh, a time frame that women should uh, wait in order before they end up uh, getting physically intimate with a guy? What, what, uh, you know, how can a woman kind of protect herself? Sure, and that's a, that's a great question, and I always say there. You know, the time frame as far as five dates, five weeks, two months, six months, that's really an individual decision that each woman has to make. But always, when I work with my clients, what I teach them is that, you know, because when you create your list, it's like, okay, what are the things that I need? Is this guy consistently showing up and giving me all those other important things? And once you see that he's giving you those other things and that he's showing you consistently by his actions that it's a priority to be with you, then give up the goods. Because part of the challenge is you give up the goods in the beginning and the oxytocin and the estrogens and all the hormones kick in, you tend to miss the other red flags. And you tend to ignore them because you don't want to see them. You don't want to accept the fact that he's a good guy but not the right guy. And so it's, you've got to really go in with some trepidation as far as saying, you know, I'm going to go there, but I've got to make sure that's the last place I go. And kind of save that, you know, for a guy who's really earned that right. You know, one of the biggest things I see with women all the time is they give that privilege to a guy and then the guy takes advantage of it, and then they get pissed off. It's like, well, you know, you got to kind of make him earn it, not to play games, because I'm not an advocate for that at all, but just showing up and saying, look, I'm looking for a relationship, and I'm looking for a guy that wants me for 
something else other than what's in my pants. And so a guy who's looking for that will show you consistently. He looks at it as an investment that he doesn't mind investing a little time, ultimately if he knows it's going to pay dividends down the road. And he's kind of clear on what that is. So when I work with women, I try to say, you know, look, let a guy know up front, look, if you're looking to get laid, it's not going to happen tomorrow. You know, it's not going to take three years, but I've got to be comfortable. I've got to be confident that we're on the same page and we want the same things out of life. And once I get to that point, then we'll go there. And I promise you that it'll be, it'll be worth the wait. And most guys who are looking for a relationship don't have a problem with that. You know, those are the men, the ones who, hey, you know, come on, I've got needs, it's all about me, and, you know, that's just a part of the relay. Those are the guys you got to be wary of. Okay, so when do you have this conversation with them? Is it the first date? Is it the, you know, before you sleep with them? Is it, when, when should a woman have this conversation about what she's looking for and, and, and uh, um, you know, whether this guy is relationship material or not? Well, I believe a woman should have that conversation as soon as she wants to. You know, part of the fear is, well, if I say that, he's going to get scared away. Well, guess what? If he gets scared away, he's showing you he was looking to get laid. So it's a matter of, you don't just come on and, hey, you know, my name is Mary. You know, I'm not going to sleep with you to the, you know, sixth week. It's, it's just a natural conversation. You know, dating is simply an interaction between two individuals trying to get to know each other. So you don't have to bring it up, okay, 45 minutes into conversation, now we'll talk about it. It will just naturally emerge. You know, in the relationship with my wife, we never even spoke about it. It just happened naturally and organic, organically. But I knew, based on the kind of person she was, that she wasn't going to give it up. And nor was I looking to get in her pants because I had done that, and very, none of those relationships led to the result I wanted. So it's like, okay, I'm going to go there, but I'm going to make sure these other things that are important that are important are there first. Okay, great. So. If uh, I'll, I'll, one of the big questions that a lot of the women had um, when I posed this uh, interview with you was was where to find these men. You know, is, is there a specific place that a woman should go? Is there you know a, a magical spot that yes. that you find all the quality men that are looking for relationships? Yes, there's there's about five acres off I-95 in in southern Florida where they all hang out. Uh, no. Um, the reality is, is they're all over, you know, just like there are good women, good women all over. And so, and that's what I kind of alluded to earlier, is when you're out there, you're living your life, and you're just being you, you will attract that guy into your life. There's something called, and I'm not a big fan of it because it's a lot of woo-woo stuff, the law of attraction. You know, like put up your vision board, say your affirmations, and the guy's magically going to show up in your backyard. I don't believe in that at all. I believe in who you're being energetically and how you're living your life and by putting yourself out there, will put you in position to find that guy. I mean, everybody knows. I mean, I've, I've got friends and family that have met their spouses in multitudes away, from bowling to the beach to on a bus to in a park in New York City, from dates to online dating, you know, blind dates. So that's the beauty of life is that you don't have to go, where do I go? Just sit back, live your life, and if you're being energetically who you need to be, the universe will kind of fill in the details. Great. So, um, what, what about uh, online dating? Is there, uh, I, you know, I have a, sometimes I get women that will come to me and they'll say that, you know, they met this guy and they, she thought he was great and, and they had this great conversation together and, and then he, he disappeared on her. Is there a, uh, you know, and, and many times it'll be like off a of Craigslist or off a of POF.com or Match.com. Is there, is there a good place to go online? Uh, yeah, first of all, I'm a huge fan of online dating, primarily because that's how I met my wife. Now, if you would have told me that 17 years ago, I would have met the love of my life online. I would have laughed at you. I would have called you every name in the book, and I would have bet everything I own against it. But again, that's what I talk about, just putting yourself out there and kind of universe filling in details. Why I'm a huge proponent of online dating is because you get to connect with someone. You get to screen them by reading their profiles, by talking to them, by interacting. You talked about a woman who said she met a guy and he disappeared. My response is, great. You didn't waste a lot more of your time. This guy showed you right from the get-go he wasn't interested in a relationship. So he was a boy. So that's why I love online dating. Another reason is that, you know, I say you pay for what you get. You know, if a lot of these people who are on free sites, you know, you call it plenty of fish, I call it plenty of feces. 
You know, there, there's, there's a lot of crap out there, and let's be honest, you know, there are a lot of guys that are emotionally unavailable who don't really care about relationships and are looking for, you know, Cindy Crawford, you know, who's 5'2", 95 pounds, 34, 24, 36, and it's just unrealistic. So those guys are pretty obvious. So if a guy's not willing to invest, you know, 25, 30 bucks to find the love of his life and for a relationship, what does that say about where he's at? So, you know, the old mantra, you pay for what you get, I'm a big proponent of paid sites. That being said, the best sites to me are the ones where a person actually writes their profile because they, you know, a profile is like a written advertisement. And, you know, ladies who are doing advertisement, pay attention because if you say the same thing that everybody's saying, I love the beach, I'm a good person, I have a big heart, I love my dog, guys are like, who cares? You know, a guy is reading a profile going, are you the kind of woman that I'm looking for? And so you want to write about those things that make you unique and that make you stand out from the rest. So a well-written profile works wonders. And what I find, people who say, oh, I hate online dating, it doesn't work, just really aren't good at it because they just don't know because everybody, nobody ever showed them or taught them how to do it right. It's like going to a gym. You can go to a gym. That doesn't mean you're going to get in shape. You've got to go and utilize the equipment properly and have the knowledge and the skills to put yourself in position to succeed. Great. So, so what should a woman look for when she's searching for a guy on an online dating site? Is it, you know, the you you have the typical stuff, which is the, you know, how tall he is and how much money he makes, and, you know, uh, all the different like uh, matching algorithms and stuff. What do you think about that stuff? Right. So, first of all, I don't want an algorithm picking my mate, and I hope anybody else wouldn't want an algorithm picking theirs. So it's a matter, are you the person that I need that's going to make me happy? So, you know, the first thing is the premise of understanding, okay, this all sounds wonderful. Is this really you? Because, again, we all paint a wonderful, wonderful picture that we've all got it together, that we've got no baggage, and that we're emotionally available, and we're these, we're these great relationship creatures. When the reality is, it's really not true. So going off with the premise that, okay, you look nice, okay, now, do you seem to be the kind of person that I'm looking for? And I think that's why having that checklist is real important. When I was looking for my wife, I knew what I was looking for. So as I read her profile, I'm like, hmm, seems interesting. Seems like the kind of girl that I was looking for. Now, did that mean she was? Hell no. She could have been, you know, a lunatic for all I knew. But as I talked to her, as I engaged her, as I dated her, the more I went out with her, the more I saw that she was the kind of person that I was looking for. So online dating is simply a forum to meet men, and that's how you have to look at it. Okay, this is a great way of, in, you know, of getting an introduction. You can literally meet somebody today, you know, with smartphones. You could be on a bus, and you could interact and find someone. But that's simply the introduction. Now you've got to go screen. You've got to do the legwork. You've got to ask the questions in a way so that you can differentiate. Is it the kind of guy that you're looking for? And that's what dating is for. Dating is simply a process to get to know someone to see if you want to have a relationship with them. Well, and, and a lot of uh, a lot of the men who email uh, the women in our community, at least, uh, tend to use these like cookie cutter <laughs> emails, and and uh, they don't really say anything about themselves. And many times, even when uh, one of the women replies back, he won't reply back to her again. Um, do you have any tips for how to, you know, get this, uh, uh, get a guy's interest or, or get a conversation starting? Right. Well, again, that the first thing is to differentiate. If these guys are using cookie cutter responses, okay, they're not responding when you say back. They're showing you that they're either boys or they're guys who aren't serious about having a relationship with you. So one of the best ways is to engage a guy is to find something, because remember, a lot of people are doing this online dating thing, and most of them are doing it wrong. It's high, you know, wink at this and wink at that and, you know, check this out or call me. And as you say, it's just something they cut and, pa cut and paste and send to everybody. Where you want someone who takes the time to not only look at your picture, because let's be honest, that's what's going to attract them first, but then looks at your profile and says, hmm, it's interesting, I want to know more about you. So it works both ways of just starting to pick something of common interest where you say, hey, you know what, I see that, you know, you like Bon Jovi. And you know what, I'm a huge Bon Jovi fan. What's your favorite album? And now you're starting a conversation. And now the guy will come back, oh, well, I like, you know, 
slippery when wet. And he starts talking about that. Oh, I do too. What's my, what's your favorite? And then you just start going back and forth. You have a natural dialogue. And it's opened up. And so it works two ways. A guy who's interested will do the same thing. He'll ask you questions as if he's interested in getting to know you. You know, a lot of times what happens is, oh, you know, you're so beautiful. You're, you're, what are you doing? Why are you still single? And it's like, come on, really? You know, that's your opening line? You're, you're saying that to everybody. What makes me, so, and not saying you're not attractive, but if that's what a guy's starting off with, he's showing you the focus is on the external. Where you want someone who says who doesn't address that because he's going to be if he's interested in you you would hope he's attracted to you. So now is he interested in you as the whole person and does he engage you and want to know? Does he ask you questions or is it all about him? It's like okay, well check my stuff out. You contact me. It's not how it works. So what what about um, guys who are who are just. Uh, what are some telltale signs that a woman might have that that a guy just isn't what she's looking for? Is it, uh, you know, is is it the way that he, um, is it what he says? It is is it how he acts? You know, what 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 could give a woman a clue that that this guy just just isn't what she's looking for? Well, get Matt. This is where getting clear on what a specific woman is looking for will help her understand that this guy isn't first. So for instance, one of the women I'm working for, she's very into health. Okay. She's, you know, she's impeccable with her diet. She's impeccable with her, with her fitness routine. And it's not that she's picky where she won't take a guy who's a little overweight, but she just wants someone who shares the same lifestyle, who values the same thing that she wants. So if she's talking to him and the guy doesn't exercise and the guy has no interest and the guy lives and eats McDonald's every day, well, she sees that, you know what, they're incompatible. I've worked with other women who, you know, having a family is very important to them. So if they talk to someone and he's got a poor relationship with his family or he can't stand his family member and he's saying, well, I don't know if I want to get married and she's clear that she wants to get married, it's a waste of time. You know, at this stage of the game, a guy should know if he wants to get married, if he wants to have a family. And so this is where a woman has to be clear on, you know, this is what's important to me and if we're not on the same page, I'm not going to try and you know manipulate you and trick you into being who I want you to be. I'm going to be honest with myself and move on and find that guy who naturally is on the same page. So you don't think that um, maybe after a while a guy might feel like he loves her so much that he'll change his mind about marriage or kids or one of those topics? I didn't say that. What I said is that if you want to roll the dice, you can, but it's a very risky proposition. Because people are who they are, and if you understand human behavior, when a guy says something, it's usually true. So I say it's kind of like you can run across the highway without looking, and there might be one person who gets across, but for every one who gets across, 999 get smashed. So I'm a big believer and just go find the person who naturally gives you and who naturally is on the same page from the get-go. It's just a lot, it's just a lot easier journey. Uh, what what about women who attract all the wrong kinds of men all the time? Is there a reason why why women do that? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> of course, there's always there's reasons for everything that happens in life. Anytime you see a pattern in life, there's a reason. You know, if you have rats showing up in your house, there's a reason why. And so, if you attract certain types of guys there's a reason why and that's where a woman has to really do I call it mirror time is really take a good look at herself and go what's going on why am I attracting these guys who you know we call the bad boy syndrome you know there are these great guys they say all the right thing the chemistry is amazing but then they're douchebags you know there's reasons why and that's where a person has to really like get honest with themselves and get real you know, part of the challenge, and I see it a lot of time in our community, is we've got all men this or all men that. And I said, until you've dated every men, man on the planet, you cannot use that statement. Okay? Yes, are there a lot of boys out there? Hell yeah, you know, you're a guy you've been on this planet. You know all the tricks that men use. You know, you're a good-looking dude. I'm sure you've, you know, you, you've had your way back in the day. But ultimately, you get to the point where you're like, hey, you know what? There's a difference between these men and the boys. And so now let me sh let me find guys who naturally from the beginning show up and show me that they're interested 
in having a relationship with me, and they're interested in being with me, and they're interested in being faithful and committed to me. Those are the kind of guys that you invest in. So how about when a woman goes out and she's looking to meet men? Should she just wait for men to approach her? Should she approach men? How do you think this interaction should look? Well, again, Matt, a lot of this, what, what I, the work that I do is helping a person get real with themselves. You know, it, it depends on your personality. If you're a person who's more shy and more reserved and, you know, initiating contact with the guy is going to make you break out in hives, you know, I'm not a big fan of that. So go find something else that will put you in position to meet and attract decent guys. However, if you're a woman who doesn't mind initiating a conversation, then simply go up to a guy and, and just engage him in a conversation. You know, ask him about, you know, if you're at a sporting event, you know, ask him about the teams he's watching. You know, if you're out at the beach, you know, and you see him write, reading a book, ask him about the book he's reading. You know, part of this thing with men and women is that we're so afraid of simply having a conversation with another human being. And you have to look at a man as simply another human being. And so if you, and there are a lot of guys out there who can be intimidated. You know, just women don't understand. There are a lot of guys who are afraid of rejection as well. You know, I wasn't the kind of guy to walk up to a grocery woman in a supermarket, crash my car into her, and start a conversation. That just wasn't me. But if I was at a barbecue or I was at an event and there was another woman there that I found attractive, I'd have no problem engaging her in conversation. And then if it went well, asking for her number at the end. So you really have to, and this is part of the problem with a lot of the, you know, quote-unquote experts out there where you talk about manipulating, do this, to say that. It's like, who are you? What works for you? You know, the only rules are the rules that work for you. So you've got to find what are the rules that you're comfortable with and that will help you get the results you want. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and one of the things that, um, that I've noticed a lot is it, a lot of women kind of tend to think that men are like these just confidence machines. You know, like they're just out there and they see the woman they want and they just – you know, go approach, you know, immediately. And, and, and uh, I've definitely, um, you know, my background and, and anybody listening to this probably knows a little bit about my background, but was of, uh, I, I used to be a men's dating coach initially. And the biggest concern that a lot of um, uh, men had was the approach because ev just about everybody's scared of the, the approach. And, and the only guys that I ever met that weren't, that would just, you know, immediately walk up we're guys who approached all the time, you know, and so, uh, um, yeah, you're absolutely right, and and uh, I, I think that's another reason why online dating's a, a great <laughs> a great vehicle is just because it it makes that interaction so much easier, and and you don't have to put yourself out on the line as much, and 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 I've noticed actually Facebook has been getting um, a, a lot of people. Uh, attracting um, men on Facebook as well. Do you do you know anything about uh, Facebook and and what's going on there? In, in what regard? I mean, we do Facebook. My wife's a big. Fan. I don't spend a lot of time on it. We don't do a lot of a lot of dating stuff on Facebook. But again, it's simply another vehicle. You know, I think Facebook is a great avenue for people to connect. You know, I've met a lot of people who were able to connect with old flames, with people that they knew when they were younger. And as a result of engaging each other, it, they allowed to start that process. So I'm for anything and everything that's going to bring a man and woman together to allow them to then take the process from there. But, you know, I, I want to add something you talked about. You know, I said I met my wife online. My wife actually reached out to me simply because I didn't even know she was out there. Online dating is such a numbers game, and I was so distracted, you know, interacting with others that I didn't even know she had a profile online. And my wife is the most laid back, easy going. Like, that's so not her nature. And I said to her, I said, you know, that's so unlike you. Why did you and it? She's like, you know, I was at that point in my life where I had nothing to lose. And so she's like, you know, I've read your profile. I liked it. And I figured I'd send you an email. If you responded, great. If not, no big deal. So you've got nothing to lose by simply sending an email. Now, once she did that, I took over, took over the role of the man and pursued her and showed her that I was interested in getting to know her. Okay, and, and so um, 
would you suggest then that because uh, a lot of times what ends up happening is is when a, a woman if a woman starts initiating things she kind of takes over that that role and starts leading the interaction and starts pushing for different dates and pushing to to you know take them out here and hey let's go there are are you saying that a woman shouldn't do that? What I'm saying is a woman it's kind of like this it's like hey I'm over here check me out okay once the guy realizes that then it's his role as the man. I believe is to initiate to follow up because again if you're doing all the work you're asking him out you're making all the plans he's kind of showing you it's not a priority to him where you want the guy to be the man and say okay look I've got this I'll take the lead not because you're subservient to me but because that's what us men do we're the pursuers and every woman loves to be pursued she loves to know that a guy's interested and you know Matt we're men we love to pursue a woman and know that she's interested in us. That that's great for our egos. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so one thing you talked about before was this this checklist for love, right? And and whenever I talk to a woman about what it is that she's looking for in a man, um, I'll either get one of two things. I either get this long <laughs> shopping list of every single trait and aspect that a man could possibly have that she wants and she's you know very stuck and rigid on that or I'll get that she hasn't really thought about it um, mm -hmm. so so are you think are you saying that these uh, this checklist that uh, uh, you know what's what's something that a, a woman would look for is this you know should she just take that list that she has of everything she wants and and uh, go up to every man and she meets and you know check one thing off at a time right see and again that's a great question because you need to differentiate because the magic word is want there's a lot of things that we want but a want is simply a preference so the way I look at it in this process that I take my clients through is that it's cool that you want that but what is it that you need if you're going to spend the rest of your life with someone, what are those important qualities and characteristics that you absolutely positively must have? And if you don't have them, you'll never be truly happy and fulfilled. So it's what I call the essential needs. So the items that ultimately wind up on the checklist, and that's really different for each individual, are called essential needs. So you've got to learn to ultimately define that. And from my experience, most individuals have anywhere from 7 to 12 essential needs. So once you identify them, now the process is easy because now you date and go, okay, do you have these things? Can you give me these things that I need? And either does or he doesn't. But it's not, you know, I totally get what you're saying. Is that I've got 362 criteria, and if he doesn't meet everyone, I can't be with him. I'm like, well, you'll never find a man that does that. So go buy some cats and get ready. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so let's say that a woman's met this amazing man that she's looking for, um, you know, Mr. Right, and she wants to start a relationship with him. Um, one of the big concerns that I get is that uh, a lot of women feel like relationships need to be as uh, just this magical, easygoing, you know, flow with thing where everything happens perfectly, and then they freak out when whenever an argument comes up. Um, you know, is is that a major concern if uh, when starting a relationship is is to make sure that there's no arguing, there's no fighting, there's none of that kind of stuff. And and if it does come up, is it some kind of clue that that things are going to go sour? Well, again, Matt. It's very indicative of the two people in the relationship because the reality is when you get two people from two completely different backgrounds, even if they have the same morals, values, and goals, there are going to be things that they disagree on. So it's, it's how they communicate during those times, how they resolve conflict, how they do agree to disagree sometimes that ultimately will determine the state and the quality of their relationship. So I'm just a big proponent of finding someone where you're not just going like this all the time. Now, I know there are some people who actually enjoy that. I'm not one of those people. I want someone that, you know, is because there's this thing called life that happens after you get each other. And life is going to throw a lot of stuff at you. And if you don't have the right person by your side and you're not able to work together and to communicate, that stuff that life throws at you will very often destroy your relationship. So it's really important that you find the right part. It's not all pixie dust. You know, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. That's unrealistic. And so finding the right partner that can help you have the most enjoyable and stress-free life as possible or, or relationship as possible. So do you think that 
a woman should avoid getting into a conversation or an argument where there's an a dis where where there's a disagreement. No, because you're going to have disagreements. Again, it's how you resolve those disagreements. If one person is making the other person wrong, guess what? That's what going to be doing throughout their relationship. But if they say, okay, well, you know, why do you feel like that? Tell me, I see it differently. Tell me, help me to understand why you see it the way you do. Okay, that's very healthy. You're going to be, there have been times in 16 years when my wife and I saw things different ways. And we were able to communicate and say, okay, why do you see it this way? And it's like, whoa, I didn't see that. You know, I agree. Or it's like, you know what, maybe we'll just agree to a disagree, but that doesn't mean I love you. It doesn't mean I don't want a relationship. It's just in the big scope of things, it's not worth arguing over. Awesome. Well, um, I appreciate everything that you've had to say today, Joe, and uh, I really, um, I, it's really been an honor to have you here on our show. Uh, what's the best way to uh, get a hold of you if, if somebody wants to contact you, if they want to check out your stuff, if they, if they want to um, uh, find out what you're all about? Sure. Well, first of all, Matt, I want to thank you for the opportunity of being here, and I want to acknowledge you for the work you're doing. You know, I know us guys, we get a bad rap sometimes, and so the fact that you're spending your time and energy, you know, dedicated to helping women improve their love life and find that great relationship, I, you know, I want to acknowledge you for that. Um, secondly, you know, if they want to find me, simply go to gpsforlove.com. I mean, it's really the simple, easiest way. Just go there. You know, we put out blogs, you know, several times a week, just like you, and you know, just check it out. If it resonates with you, great. If not, that's okay too. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot for being on the show, and um, everybody, I will speak with you again soon. Great. Thanks a lot, Matt. I appreciate it.